Hi everyone, Jeffy here and welcome back to Around the World in Many Days, uh, where we follow a character named Gladys on her trip around the world and solve puzzles trying to figure out where she is this time. Today's episode is number seven and it's called Kings of Centuries Past. Um, the grid is on the screen right now and uh, how this works is I'm going to read you the rules of the puzzle, show you how to solve it step by step. If you want to try it out yourself first, the link is always in the description. And uh, after we figure out where Gladys is this time, we're also, for the first time, we're going to look at the map to see uh, what kind of uh, places she's been so far in these seven episodes. A lot more episodes to come, so we're nowhere near to completing the trip around the world. But let's see. So this is the, um, the grid that we have this time, sort of... Uh, crossword grid on the gray here and then some black and white circles and how we always start is read the message from Gladys so here we are uh, dear puzzling this time I have a Shingoki puzzle for you draw a single loop that passes through all the black and white circles in the grid going horizontally and vertically through centers of cells without crossing itself or branching out each of the letters W, X, Y, and Z stands for a different number 2 to 5. You see we, have, we don't have numbers in these circles. We have these letters standing for the numbers. Uh, numbers indicate the sum of the lengths of loop segments continuing straight from the circled cell. For example, if a circled cell has the number 3, the loop continues for one cell before turning in, the other uh, in one direction, and for two cells before turning in the other direction. The loop must pass straight through a white circle and must make a turn in a black circle. The loop will not pass through every single cell in the grid. Some of, the, some of them will be left unvisited. Uh, just to clarify that, let's open up, open up an editable grid. So what that means is we're always turning in these, uh, in these black circles and we're always going straight through these white circles. And uh, these numbers, if this y was a 3, that would indicate that these uh, lengths would add up to 3. So this is now 2 and plus 1. So this could turn here and this could turn here and this would be a 3. So that's how those, and these also, uh, all have to be different numbers. Okay, uh, let's go on. Today I have visited a city on ancient trade routes, home to kings of centuries past. Can you guess where I am? Love, Gladys. So just giving us a hint of what the final answer is going to be. Now we have two puzzles again. So below the grid we have uh, some cryptic clues. Notice these enumerations here. Also, if you're not sure, what type of clues they are. It says cryptic crosswords in the tag. So we need to solve a cryptic crossword and the Shingoki. Well, uh, let's uh, do as we did last time. So do the, the grid puzzle first because we just went through the rules. So I will start with that. Here is the editable grid. Now, uh, how do we solve Shingoki? Well, this is uh, the same type of puzzle that we had last time, mid-loop, uh, a bit different rules, but we have to make a single loop again. And again, we're going to do it in parts. So the first thing we know is uh, that we are all, always turning in these black circles. That means that one of these sides, horizontal sides, is going to be, um, it go, it's going to go in one direction horizontally and one vertically. So, for example, this... Um, corner cell here, we already know it can't go in two directions, though, so the only two are here. Now what complicates this a little bit is uh, we don't know the the numbers. So in normal Shingoki, let's say this was uh, 9, well we would al already know how much it can go in this direction and we would know uh, how much at least we would need to continue in this, this direction. But we don't in this case, so we have to deduce uh, these, some of these uh, numbers before we can we can um, sort of do a lot. 
So um, again, these uh, black circles, if there's a limitation on one side, that means that vertically it can only go here. Horizontally still two options, but vertically it has to go here. Uh, now, I think that's all the restrictions we have on blacks. Now, on whites, uh, whites have to go straight. So this has two options. It can go horizontal, uh, vertically or it can go ho horizontally. But obviously these that are on the on the border here, they can't go off the grid. So these must all go hor horizontally and these must go horizontally. And obviously the from the from the corner it has to turn. Now here we come to a, a point where these could um, these could join, and it comes to a sort of similar situation that we had in in mid loop. In mid loop, the the circle had to be in the center, and it didn't work if there are two numbers on the same segment. Well, uh, in Shingoki you can have two numbers on the same segment, but here it doesn't work. And the reason why it doesn't work is these have to be different numbers. So this indicates we have a stretch of Z, which turns somewhere. It could go here or it could turn. But if whatever this Z is, it's going to be different from this Y. So these can't be the same stretch then. Which means Z has to turn. And oopsie doodle, we already, already know what the Z is. That was very simple. We already know z is 2. Uh, no further sort of... Uh, nothing tricky needed to find out what z is. So also we know z is 2 and we also know no other um, no other uh, letter can be 2 now. And that's also useful for us because y, first of all, y has to turn. And second of all, y can't turn here because that would make y 2 and z is already 2. So that means uh, we are going straight here, and that means we already know why. So that's one, two, three, and four. So why is four? Mm, I'm debating whether I should mark them. It's only four numbers. I think we can we can remember them. We could mark them like this. Uh, pen has an option to mark some. Make some pencil marks there, but I'm, I'm going to leave it at that. I mean, we can remember four numbers, right? So Z is two, Y is four. So now X is going to be either three or five. Remember, we had the numbers two to five. Well, it can't be three now because this is already a stretch of four and this is one. So it's it's at a minimum five. And it can't be more than five. So it has to turn here. And now we already know all the numbers. So Z is two y is 4, x is 5, so that makes, makes the w a 3. And from there on, I mean, it's a, it's a regular Shingoki, since we've figured out all the, all the numbers. Well, we know y is 4, it starts from there, so 1, 2, 3, 4. We know x is 1, so it can't go further here, it must turn, but we don't know in which direction. This x is somewhat limited. Horizontally, it could go a maximum of two. One in this direction or two in this direction. So that means five minus two is three. So horizontally, it must go at least three. Well, it can't go up in this, that case. So one, two, and three. This is the minimum it needs to go in uh, vertically. It could go further, it could go a fourth and then one here in either direction. But now if we look at this x next to it, which is also a five, obviously, uh, it can no longer be horizontal. So this has to go here. And uh, even if it takes this, it's one, two, three, and we need four and five here. Well, can we join this? This would be one, two, three, four, five, six. This would be six. That's too long. So we can't join this. This has to turn. This could go in either direction and this could go in another direction, but this has to go straight. Then. And obviously the horizontal part of this is already filled. So we have to go in this direction, at least here. And now since this needs a horizontal component, 
uh, it can't be here, so this has to be it. And we can fill the five, so it's one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, and, we, and it has to turn here. What else do we know? We know this Z uh, needs a horizontal component, and it can't go in, can't go left, so it must go right. We already also know that Z is two, so it can't be can't go straight because this would be two, and it would need a one horizontally somewhere. So this must turn. Mm, should I mark the ones that can't turn? By the way, we have these X's that we can use. This can't uh, continue straight. This can't continue straight. This can't continue straight. This can't continue straight. Okay, and that actually helped helped me. I didn't realize that we already knew where this is going to turn. So let's look at this. So since we can't go straight, we can't turn there. Only one option. What else? Now these W's are threes. Okay, that helps us actually. Um, this three cannot be horizontal because it would need to turn here, and that's only two. So this must be vertical. One, two, and three. Now this cannot be vertical because that would make this a five at least. So that's horizontal. This can go nowhere but straight. This must turn here. Only one way to go. Now this black has needs a um, horizontal component as well. So that must go here. And remember this Y was four. So this can only go two in this direction at a maximum. So it needs two vertically. It can't take that from from above, so it must go one, two in this direction. It could take the third, actually. Yeah, it could. It could take the third and then turn here. What about this Y here, which is a four? Now that is... Is that limited? Uh, it, it could go straight here, which would make it a three. And in fact, in fact it must, because this W is turns here and we know this is a three so one two three okay so we already knew this the horizontal component of this one was three but um, do we know which way the vertical part goes I don't think we do let's uh, see okay if this one turns left it makes a small loop and we can't do that it has to be a one continuous loop so it has to go in this direction which means this has to go in this direction and this is a dead end you can't escape from these cells if you go there so it has to go down this only has one way to go is there and now could this uh oh, this can't go straight because this has to turn the, the loop has to turn in a black cell, so this would make it go straight. So that's not allowed. So we go up, and we can't go up here for another reason, which is the Z is two. So this would make it at least a three, or exactly a three, because it can't go there. But uh, yeah, we can't go here, which means we turn, and now the Z can't go here, so it must go up, and that's the two. This must turn, in, and there's only one way to go. Now that leaves this, with only one way to go. It has to join here. It has to go straight and then straight. And it's uh, pretty straightforward from here. This has only one option. Now this Y has to turn. It can't go up, so it must go down. And we must join these. This only has one way to go. And now these, both, both of these only have, four, have one option. And that is the solution to the Shingoki. Um, so we will need this after we solve the crossword as well. So I'm going to leave it here. And we'll look at the cryptic crossword now. So scroll down for the clues. Okay. So, and then... From my screen, as always, I need to find the actual window. Okay, here it is. We had 
having a small screen. Um, so, uh, so these are cryptic clues. We've done this before. So let's start at the, at the top again. So uh, this one across here. Manly dictator besieging Switzerland. Uh, now, if you think about what uh, what words here can indicate something, uh, well, dictator is some, sometimes used as uh, indicating like a homophone, because not the dictator as in a ruler, but someone who dictates, someone who speaks. It refers to speaking. That dictator says something. It dictates something. Uh, that refers to like. Uh, Make, taking a homophone of a word, um, but it could also be just the name of a dictator. Besieging, if you're besieging something, you're surrounding it. So could it be dictator besieging, uh, like surrounding, uh, short term for Switzerland? Well, we've had Switzerland before, CH, as in uh, if you have like a car license plate from Switzerland, it has CH. CH. So something, a three-letter dictator surrounding CH, making manly. Well, Mao was a dictator, M-A-O, and macho means manly. Um, let's look at... Uh, one down here. So one down is old lady got green light to make a pot of coffee. Um, so uh, if something got something, this this would mean this is inside the old lady. To make can mean just uh, could indicate this is the wordplay. Word play. Uh, you do this word play to make an answer meaning a pot of coffee. Well, green light um, is like permission, right? Or if you green light something, uh, you allow it. And we only have two, uh, four letters. So two letters for green light could be OK. I OK the decision. I green lighted the decision. Or the decision got the OK, got the green light. So, OK inside something, making a pot of coffee. Well, we have the M here. OK. And your Ma is your old lady, right? And a Mocha is a, a type of coffee pot. Let's do this 9, which starts with K now. 9 across. Head of Kivans, a people from Asia. Well, sort of. Seems like this has to be the K here, head of Kivans, the head letter of the word Kivans. And then a people from Asia. Uh, well, there are three letter uh, names for people from Asia, like Lao or Han. And in this case, it's Han. But you might think, well, that doesn't leave any room for the definition. And it doesn't doesn't because a Khan is uh, Kiva was a uh, Khanate. It it had a Khan. It's uh, it's uh, head of state was the Khan. So they were people from Asia, and their head was the Khan. So that's an end lit clue. This whole thing is the definition. Uh, let's continue. This two down. A singer pinching Gladys. That's relatively painful. Well, uh, you see maybe too much of this Gladys. Uh, Gladys is the the protagonist, so it's usually I or me or my or something like that. So pinching. If you if you pinch something, you steal it or pinch like as in surround from from both sides. Works. In, two ways so meaning something inside another thing so we need a is this a here and then we need the name of a singer 
containing I for Gladys and that's that is uh, so you do this wordplay and that is an answer for relatively painful well relatively here is uh, just saying that it's um, more painful so it's a uh, something uh not just painful but re relatively painful relative to something else well we only need we have this i here and four letter word for a singer share is a singer c h e r and eight here re relatively painful now let's see this one has is missing one letter so i think that should be easy enough central asian nomad sweetheart and this should be uh, straightforward a central asian nomad is a hun huns were the people from nomadic people from from central asia and hun it's a term for sweetheart let's look at this this 11 starting with ai 11 across flying is a no-brainer foolishly not taking into account the extremes in aviation well this is a pretty long stretch of words that can be an indicator you, you're not taking into account something so you have the whole whatever this this uh, previous part gives you and then you're not taking it into account something you're dropping something out of it and the extremes uh, of this word the extremes in aviation can mean this uh, these extreme letters the first and the last letter in aviation so if you remove a and n from a no-brainer foolishly well a no-brainer has a and n right right so you would have O brainer foolishly. Well, foolishly can be like uh, in the wrong order, right? Anagrammed. And uh, if you an anagram O brainer, actually, let's do it like this uh, write it in order. So it would be O, B, R, A, I, N, E, R. You get airborne. Something is flying, it's airborne. So not fly, uh, in the surface this flying was a noun. Flying is something, but airborne is uh, obviously an adjective, and flying can be uh, something is flying. A flying fox is an airborne fox. Well, that was a terrible example, because a flying fox isn't a ter uh, an airborne fox. But anyway, a flying something is an airborne something. Airborne fox, wow. Anyway, um, moving on, uh, four down. Go slower to capture Nordic city. Well, if you can come up with a Nordic city that is four letters and starts with an O and ends with an O, maybe this is easy. So these words captured um, contain inside them Oslo, which is an, uh, the capital of Norway, Nordic city. Oops, misspelled there. Um, let's look at this eight so we can get into this corner here eight across japanese company scraping bottom in the mediterranean question mark so um the mediterranean question mark what is the mediterranean an example of well it's an example of a sea isn't it the mediterranean sea now scraping bottom is the bottom letter the G of uh, the bottom letter of scraping that is inside the C here and we get Sega which is uh, a Japanese company now yeah I now realize this, this is not a good indicator because usually bottom is in a, in a down clue that's it's at the bottom and here it's an across clue but I didn't realize it before making this. Anyway, um, yeah, let's do six, six down. European writer without a shred of tolerance. Um, so 
without something you leave out some part of the word for writer a shred of tolerance you take a little bit of the word tolerance you take the t here remove a t from a writer and you get a word for a european well europeans have a few of a few of the european peoples have really short names like uh, you have Czech and Finn and Pole and Dane and here it's Dane which is Dante Dante was a writer and you take the T out you get Dane let's see five across man mostly unaffected by detonation well you detonate like an explosive right and if it's unaffected when you det detonate it that's uh, that's called a dud like if it doesn't explode man is a dude and if you take most of the word dude you get dud so that's the word play remove the final letter from the word dude um, let's look at five down so we can finish up this top almost finish up this this top half so five down orders from above say Fahrenheit units finally starting to be replaced with Celsius okay so Celsius uh, obviously is uh, abbreviated C and Fahrenheit is uh, abbreviated F Finally is the final letter, so it could be um, could be this S or it could be this G. Uh, finally, can refer to either side of it, or indeed it could go. It could take several uh, several final letters to be replaced with. So something we take something uh, out of another word and replace it with C. Well, what's this starting doing if, if it isn't the final letter of the word starting? So if it's G, G to, re to be replaced with C, that would mean that we take Fahrenheit units or units or say Fahrenheit units. Well, Fahrenheit units are like Celsius units are degrees and we have this DE here so Fahrenheit units would be ex examples of degrees and this says like in the meaning like for example say Fahrenheit units and then we take the G for finally starting and replace it with C replace this G with C and we get decrees which are orders from above Okay, uh, do we have good starting letters for the... Uh, we have two letters for this seven. Let's look at that one. So seven down. In Washington, I'm recruiting trained leaders close to worldwide period of conflict. Um, leaders can mean lead letters, like first letters of words, and it's leaders, so it's it could be multiple leaders, like I W I R T, or it could be in W I R T. So a uh, close to worldwide, uh, close to could be like next to, like put next to the other word but it could also be the closing letter this e well if you um if you are i'm actually struggling to pass this myself i know the answer but uh the answer is answer is uh wartime the period of con conflict is wartime so it's in washington wa right wa is the standard abbreviation for the state of washington and then i'm so washington i'm is wa 
I am. Inside that, in these, leaders of these words, so recruiting trained leaders, RT. So R was this R here, and T is here. And close to worldwide is E. So that makes wartime, period of conflict. Okay. Some, uh, sometimes this uh, you you forget because it's been a long time before I'm uh, uh, like after I'm I made this. Sometimes you forget even though you know the answer. Sometimes you have to think about how to actually solve it. Um, but these aren't you know that that far back that I made these. Uh, Twelve across. Let's look at this one. People on the website finally seen coming around to embrace to embrace Asian philosophy. Um, coming around could mean backwards. You're, you're coming backwards, you're coming around. To embrace can mean to surround Asian philosophy. Well, here it's a uh, Zen is a type of Asian philosophy that fits here. So something embracing uh, Asian philosophy and um, site finally is E and then scene is just uh, uh, sorry so it's S yeah uh, the other way around. It's sight and then finally seen is the N here and all backwards. So surrounding this N we have sight, just the word sight, S-I-T-E and then N from the final letter of the word seen. And that surrounds Zen, Asian philosophy. And we get people on the web who are netizens. So again this finally could have been this E or it could have been this N. Uh, could go either way. Let's do this 12 down. Hero in film embraces king, the ruler of a large empire. Well, king can be, um, has some synonyms. It can be K from chess, like in chess notation, the king is K. It can be R from Latin, like Rex. Uh, which is used in like, uh, at least in Britain, is used in these uh, abbreviations for kings. For example, the current king is C.R. Charles Rex. But here is just R. And hero in film, three letters, is Neo, the hero of the film The Matrix. And Nero was the ruler of a large empire i.e. The, the Roman Empire. And we have the embrace again, actually. That, it was the same thing. Same thing as here, embrace. You, you don't usually see the, uh, the same word for, two, for the same purpose twice. Bit of a kind of a mistake. Uh, should have maybe used something else because there are other options. Generally, you don't see. If you see the same word, it's usually used in a different purpose. But here it was the same. Uh, let's look at let's look at the 16. One who wanders from place to place, they say. Um, well, one who wanders from place to place. Uh, that fits here. There's a sort of uh, people called Roma who at least like used to be like nomadic maybe less now but still like reputation of wandering from place to place but they say it doesn't mean Roma and there's no like wordplay opportunity to make the, make the word Roma but this is actually an, another and lit so it's a uh, the definition is one, one who wanders from place to place, they say, question mark. So people might say if you're a Roma, people might say you wander from place to place, whether it's uh, like 
currently true or not. And uh, the wordplay is one who wanders. If you wander, you roam. R O A M. Aroma. R O A M E R would be one who wanders from place to place. And they say means uh, homophone. And Roma. R O M A is a homophone of that word. So that's how the word play works. And we get an A for the for the 13 down. Turn coating, heartless person from uh, from Qatar, an Arab country. We have a lot of these parentheticals here. Here, here and here. Well, an Arab country. Maybe you can guess w which one it can be, but uh, how does that work? So turn coding can mean backwards. You are like going in the other direction. Heartless. Um, not sure if we use heartless. Heart. The heart of a word is the central letter or letters. Um, so we need a person from Qatar backwards and without the central letter or letters. Well, a person from Qatar is ca uh, Qatari with an I, so QA, then it would be TA, that's the central duo because it's six letters, so we need to take the two letters out. TA, R, Qatari without the central two letters, we get Iraq backwards. And Iraq is an Arab country. I can add Q at the start of 18, so we probably can do that. Like, how many words could there be that start with Q, right? So, stop taking MDMA to be calm. Uh, MDMA is a drug that's uh, also called ecstasy, and it's often in uh, in crosswords. It's often E. Um, so it's um, something takes has inside it an E, and the answer means calm. So if you stop, you quit. You put an E inside, you get quiet, which means calm. Now, maybe we should do this because uh, this only needs one more letter, 17 across. To football league's backers, a way to cheer the Spanish players. Uh, so, backers, uh, a backer can mean uh, the backing letter, so since it's a plural it could be this L and this E and maybe this O as well, O-L-E would fit here, and that is, ole is a word, and a way to cheer the Spanish players, if you if you chant ole, you are cheer, maybe cheering the Spanish players. So, ole there and um, then 15 across has the same Spanish players actually so let's read that and we have this E here for 15 across almost a way to affirm love for the Spanish players um, we are going to come back to that because I don't remember what the answer is here. So we'll, uh, this should be easier, this 15, 15 down. St. Anthony's cross towards agnostics and unbelievers is principal characters. Well, towards agnostics and unbelievers is, so these start, starting letters spell out T-A-U and with, that fits this U here. And if you look up St. Anthony's cross, that is the Tau cross, the sort of cross that, that's missing the, the top part. That looks like a Greek, like a Greek letter Tau. So, what about 10 down? Woman ultimately taking place of man, one serving time in prison, it's natural. Well, woman ultimately, ultimately, like finally, uh, can be the final letter of this, but it also be, can be final letter of this. 
but here we have taken place of. So I just move my camera. Okay, sorry about that. Um, so woman ultimately n taking the place of another letter m and one letter abbreviation for man is m. So n taking place of m in a word meaning one serving time in prison. And that gives us a word meaning natural. Um, so if we take the word inmate with M here, inmate, and we replace the M for man with N, we get innate, which is natural. And now maybe this 15 will come back to me. So almost a word to affirm, affirm love for the Spanish players. Okay, so players is team. And for the Spanish, a word way to affirm, affirm love is like to say I love you, te amo, without the O. And it's almost, like almost the entire uh, phrase. Remove the O there and you get players, team. So the Spanish players are not the same, in, not in the same meaning as, as in the, as, as in this one. And now we only have one letter to fill. So let's see if we can do that. And this clue is must rent adult films. Now rent is a weird word. Uh, it can mean like, um, like twisted. So it can be an anagram indicator. And if you anagram the word must, you get smut, adult films. And that was correct. That's our grid here. So um, let's try to look at these together then. And um, maybe we can go back to the description. There was one, um, one sentence which we might need to pay attention to, which is this last one. So oh, oh, we have the loop here. So the loop will not pass through every single cell in the grid. Some of them will be left unvisited. Well, why say that? Like, wouldn't we know already once we've solved it that, that it doesn't visit all of the cells? Could it be that these unvisited cells, which are these four here, are somehow important? Well, let's look at the crossword grid. If we highlight the matching matching letters here, that spells out Kano. And we were looking for what, what were we looking for? A city on ancient trade routes, home to kings of centuries past. Well. That is Kano, Nigeria is on ancient trade routes, like the ones that go south of the Sahara. And it was a kingdom at one point. So we are currently in Kano. And um, I don't ha actually have the, the Wikipedia article open, but I have something maybe better that now that we know we are in Kano, and that is the answer to episode seven. We now have seven uh, sort of locations. So maybe we can look at the where uh, Gladys has been so far. So this is the map. So we are in Africa, started here in Ethiopia. That was the Hagar Figures Theater here. Went to the Seychelles, Valle de Mer. Went to Mauritius, Seven Colored Earths. So that was episode three. Then we were in Madagascar, Avenue of the Baobabs, Ruaha National Park in Tanzania. And then these two are the sort of the, the ship, uh, the sort of cruise ship that she was on from Zambia to Tanzania and Vili Emba. And now we are here in Kano, Nigeria. So that's the sort of trip so far. 
and uh, yeah, that concludes this episode. <clears throat> Next episode is going to be called um, In Remembrance of Dark Times. And we will be solving something called Printer's Devilry. So, a sort of cross type of crossword that we haven't seen before. So, I will see you then, and thanks for watching.